Hey, welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. We're in Activity 5, and we're going to begin coding our game, which is called Whack-A-Mole. The first part of this tutorial will show you how to put a timer and a stopwatch on the screen, and then we'll be able to keep track of how long the uh, watch has run. Once we have the stopwatch working, we're going to convert this program into a game. And so we'll use the uh, timer in the Whack-A-Mole game to figure out how long it takes the user to click a certain icon in a specific amount of time. So let's get started in programming. So I'm here in the uh, Visual Studio environment, and let's create a new project. So I'm going to call mine Mole. You can call yours Whack-A-Mole or something like that. And make sure that Windows Forms is checked. So this will be a fairly simple interface to begin with. I'm going to put a label on the screen, which will tell us how much time has elapsed. And then we'll put button 1, button 2, and button 3, which will be used to start, stop, and reset the timer. Now let's add a new control that we haven't seen before in the previous tutorials. It's called Timer. When you uh, drag Timer onto the form, you will notice it's, much of a, it's an invisible kind of a control. It doesn't show up on the form itself, but it shows up in the footnote. And so that just lets us get to the properties of the timer. So let's rename the text of our buttons to Start for button 1, Stop, and Reset. Since there are more than one button on the screen, I'm going to give the buttons a name. So BTN underscore Start, BTN underscore Stop, and BTN underscore Reset will be the names that I choose. Now let's go into the form and let's start working on the code. So I'll right click on the form face and choose view code. So I'm going to invent a new variable called watch and it will be type stopwatch. So this will be used to keep track of the time elapsed in our program. You'll notice that when I hover over the uh, red line it says we have a problem and we need to use a system library called system.diagnosis. And so the new line appears up here on line 5 and the stopwatch is working. Next let's go into the program code for the start button. So let's go back into the designer, double click on start, and now we have a new method called button start click. So we use a simple so we use a fairly simple method here. We're going to reference the watch and tell it to start the watch. Now let's go into the stop button and do the same thing. So the method that we're looking for is the stop watch. Let's go into reset and do the same for watch and we'll reset the time. So the reason why we need a timer here is because we want an event to update periodically. Let's take a look at the interval of the timer. It says it's at 100 right now and it is not enabled. So I'm going to change it to be enabled and the interval can be any number you like. Uh, we can leave it at 100 which would be one tenth of a second. That'll be fine. So now let's double click on timer 1 and we get a tick event. So every time the timer ticks we can uh, update the label. Alright so in the uh, timer tick event we want to show the label is going to display the current time. So watch.elapsed is the value that I'm trying to show. So the timer itself is not the timer that starts and stops. The timer just gives us a way to periodically do a method call. So now when I run the program you can see that the tick event has already occurred. The timer has set the watch, uh, the timer shows the value of the watch up here on the screen. It's zero. If I push start, the timer begins, and every tenth of a second, the tick event now updates the label. So we can stop the watch, we can reset the watch, and start it again. So we need to distinguish between what a timer does and what a stopwatch does. The stopwatch is a way to measure the elapsed time since it was started or stopped or reset. The tick event, which is set to the timer, is an update to the uh, application. So ours is set to every tenth of a second to update the value of the stopwatch. 